Okay, so what we're going to do is kind of the next step in organizing um, a mix session. So we've kind of done a static mix, or I've done a static mix, you've done a static mix. Um, I want to reiterate, because I'm already feeling as I'm listening to this, that a static mix and any mix, after taking some time, and this goes for your writing too, taking some time away from it, things change. Um, I'm already kind of feeling that my shaker is louder than my kick and snare. The bass seems rather quiet. But I'm watching. You know, I, can, I can come up. I have headroom for it. Anyways, that's not what I'm here for right now. So continuing to adjust on that first pass of a static is super common. What I want to get o go over today is um, three ways to group our tracks. Um, there's the traditional grouping. There are what's called VCA or voltage control um, amplifiers. Um, and there are just using a, an aux track as a submix. And there are benefits to you know all of them or pros, cons, personal flavors and choices. Um, so I'm just gonna go over them. So I have my drums and I'm just going to highlight these first four by highlighting and holding down shift. And I can come down to groups here. And if, I, if you don't see your groups, um, they might be hidden. You all of that arrow will reveal the group um, list, and you can hit new group. I'm going to call this drums. And because I have these highlighted, I have um, already currently in the group the the drums that I've selected. Now I'm choosing not to do the drums from the bridge section just because they're for a different part of the song, and I, I might want to have control over them separately. Um, so what can you do with a group? Actually, I'm just going to very quickly say, okay, and we'll come back to that and look a little bit more. So say that we like the overall volume curve, the relationship between our kick snare, uh, second snare and the shaker and whatnot. We like the panning by creating this group. We have given ourselves volume control that keeps that volume relationship between the tracks the same. So if I come just to one fader, I can bring up the overall volume of the drums, those four tracks that are put into that groove. Um, you can always disable um, a group by clicking, uh, hitting command and clicking on it, or um, I, suppose on, I suppose on a Windows machine that would be control click. And when I do that, I now have control over the individual volumes, which is actually one of the, you know, to me, one of the, the workflow drawbacks of one of these traditional groups is sometimes I forget that I have a group engaged and I'll say, I just need to bring up that hi-hat, uh, that snare, and I end up bringing up the whole group. And that is not what I wanted. So, um, and I forget to, to disengage it. Now, opening this up again, if I go back in to modify this group, <clears throat> a little bit more about groups, because that's basically, um, well, we'll talk about that in a second. So you can have control, group control over the edit window, or just the mix window, or both. Um, and when we're talking about in the edit window, for example, um, if we're going to do some editing across the drum set, the drum kit, then being able to highlight quickly and know that anything that you do to one track will be done to the others could be useful. Um, so that is, you know, what editing in the, uh, having the group available in the edit window. The mix window I already showed you at least with volumes, but you also have additional parameters that you can control. If you go to attributes, you see that these are uh, grayed out and that's because it's just following the globals. 
and the globals are volume mute. Um, I don't want panning on my global in my group because I have different pan settings and if I were to pan everything it would throw off that relationship that I have in some of my um, on some of my tracks so I am choosing not to have that up um, but again going into attributes if you say no I, I want to be more specific than just following the, the globals you can um, control certain elements um, like the bypasses of your plugins on your inserts or the levels of sends or the mutes of sends. These are fairly random that they're, that they're already here. Um, so, but following the globals is a good starting place. It's really about volume, your mutes and solos. So if I go back and just hit OK here, you can see that when I, sol uh, when I mute, all four get muted. When I solo, that one didn't happen. And it's probably, uh, let me see. Solos, there you go. Uh, you could do record enabling. All of these things can kind of be uh, driven by your own setup of that group. Okay, so that's the basic, you know, how to use a group. Now, the other way, of, and I'm going to leave that alone for the, the drums. Um, I'm going to go to my bases, and I'm going to create another group. On a Mac, I can hit Control-G and bring up the same window instead of coming down here. Control-G, I said Command-G, Control-G would be on a PC. I'm going to call this my base group because I have three tracks that make up my base. And if I'm happy with the, that um, volume relationship and I want to be able to control volume of the whole base, not the individual pieces, um, I have a group now. But another way of grouping is what's called a VCA, a voltage control amplifier. So I'm going to make a new track and it's going to be a VCA. I don't need to say mono or stereo because um, I'm going to leave this titled VCA Bass um, because it isn't it doesn't pass audio so it being mono or stereo is irrelevant this is literally now simply a controller will be simply a controller for this group so if I now I have to come up to group here where it says no group and assign it to the group that I want it to control. If I assign it to drums accidentally, I am now moving my drum tracks, but that was not the intent. This is my bass VCA. So now I have control over these three volumes when I use the VCA volume. But if I come to the individual tracks, I now have individual control over um, those tracks. So if I wanted to raise the bass organ a little bit because I made a decision that I wanted to, I could come over here and do that. I could mute that part and still be able to control everything and hear what I wanted to hear. Um, But I can also mute from the tracks themselves. So in a way, VCAs give you a little bit more control over the group because you have some individual control. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't give you the, um, you know, the quick, I want to mute. You know, it does. You know, I mute everything. Um, but you can kind of get confused. Am I using a group? Am I using a VCA? And it's just, you know, getting used to it and making your decision and creating your workflow. So we've done groups and VCAs, and VCAs again are really related to groups. They are um, uh, a group controller. Now, the last one I'm gonna do is um, using an aux input track. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and make that right away. Oop, not a new session. I'm going to make a new track. It is going to be stereo, and it's going to be an aux input, and I'm going to call this Vox Sub. Vocal Sub. And this is kind of a more traditional way of working with um, what are called submixes in like on analog consoles. This is kind of how I grew up. So what I am going to do, these are not, this is not a group per se, um, at least not in that sense of having control over um, multiple faders and having them move at once. What I'm going to do is I've highlighted all these so that I can do a group command, which is on a Mac, Option and Shift, and I'm going to change my main output here. And I'm going to change that to a bus. And I'm not, I don't have any other routing going on, so I'm just going to use bus one and two. And because I had these highlighted and I hit option and shift, um, all the tracks I have highlighted got shifted to bus one and two. So now if I were to go and listen to this, to the vocal parts, I don't hear them because they're not going to the master fader. They're going on a bus. Where is that bus going? I haven't assigned it anywhere yet. But if I come up to the vocal sub, the aux, and I change the input to bus one and two, now I'm gonna have global control over all of these with this curve on this one fader. By the way, that's called solo save. We'll go over that some other time. Um, because in order to hear anything from within the group, you need to solo the track and the aux, or else, um, unless you're in solo safe mode, which I don't know how to do that on a PC, but it's control on the, um, no, I'm sorry, it's command and click on the solo. So that would be control and click. From this way around, feeling it overtake. Okay, so what is a benefit of having um, the vocal sub um, when I raise this volume fader, it's essentially doing the same thing as raising the volume fader of the VCA, except the VCA literally brings up these faders. How, what's the difference? The difference is that an aux passes audio. So all of these tracks, their audio, their signal is going through this sub this this aux input track what is the benefit of that so um, often something that we like to do on a sub is to process the whole group so if I want to put on some compression across the vo um, across the vocal group I can do that you know maybe I wouldn't do it on the lead vocal, maybe I wouldn't do it on the double of the lead vocal. So I'm taking that out of the group by physically by redirecting the output to the master. And now this becomes really, it's a, a backup vocal sub mix and it is going through compression. So um, one of the benefits of using a vocal, uh, an aux input track as a submix or a control of a group is that you can do additional processing on it, and that can be pretty cool. Um, so once again, we went over basic groups where you have, you know, the you can maintain your volume curve, but raise the overall volume. It also gives you editing um, uh, editing control over whatever's in that group. 
it gives you mutes and you can set it up to do solos you can set it up to do panning and whatnot we have the vca which takes a traditional group and kind of gives you overall volume control and mute control and solo over the group but with a separate controller um, and that allows you to maintain individual control of mutes and solos and volume and then we have this the aux input track which is kind of more again a traditional sub mix where we can assign the outputs of any track to go through the aux and that um, it does give us volume control it does give us mute and it gives us the ability to to process the actual audio of those tracks together um, a lot of people call that kind of thing like glue. You take a group of sounds that you want to just kind of make, a, you want to control it a bit more um, as a group, not as the individual components. You can still EQ and compress the individual tracks, but then as a whole, what could we do to it? Maybe we want to filter it, um, put it through a really cool EQ weird sound or something like that. Um, in any case, that's three ways to, to group, and it's the next step in organizing so that um, if I want to start to, to raise the overall volume of my bass, even though I, I like the volume curve of the three tracks, I got it on the VCA. If I like the volume relationship and the panning relationship between my drums, I can raise or lower the volume. I can mute and, and take out the drums instead of having to mute four separate tracks. All right, so groups are very useful, they're convenient, and knowing how to use them differently is just gonna take you to that next step.